Hey guys, it's time to check out the Android L Developer Preview on my Nexus 5. The system images were made available yesterday on the Android Developer website with lots of warnings for it being unstable and they take no responsibility for your device exploding in your face. Yada yada yada, of course I flashed it straight away. No Android version number is shown in the settings, just an L and tapping on the version area gives us a strange easter egg, I'm sure this won't be in the official build. We actually saw this same image earlier in the year on YouTube, Google used it to test the quality on channels so it's kind of fitting that it's in a test build of Android. Okay, so one of the biggest changes in Android L is the lock screen and we'll start off at the top and work our way down. Top left we have the carrier label, on the far right we see our Google Plus profile image. Now at the Google I.O. the status bar icons were also redesigned to look a little cleaner, unfortunately those are not present in this build, we still have the older KitKat icons, a new Roboto font for the clock and of course the big change lock screen notifications. I for one am so happy they included these, I've always been a big fan. Also notice the little jumping animation as I keep the device awake, pretty much everything is now animated in Android L which which I'm a big fan of, it adds fluidity and consistency instead of things disappearing and reappearing somewhere else. Tapping on the notifications raises them up, giving them a 3D effect, the other notifications fall into the backdrop and allow you to focus on the one you chose. Of course you can swipe them away and you can see everything moves up accordingly. You can expand them of course, firstly you can actually peek at the notification content by just not pulling it down all the way, or you can fully expand them which gives the notification center stage. This is essentially your status bar, you can pull down again to access your quick settings. We'll check those out a little later, you can go back to the lock screen by tapping anywhere else. And of course you can access the application by tapping the notification twice. Now in this build lock screen widgets are nowhere to be found, no idea if they'll be back or not. You can swipe up to unlock to the home screen, swiping right takes you to the dialer and left to the camera. If you're wondering what happens if you have a secure lock screen, well firstly you can see the notification content is actually hidden until you unlock it so sensitive info isn't shown. Tapping the notification twice brings up my pattern screen and also trying to fully expand the notification also brings up the pattern lock screen. The only thing you really can do is swipe them away. Another area that's had a big makeover is the notification and quick settings panel. You can pull down once to see your notifications and again to see your quick settings. We now have an always present brightness slider at the top, then settings such as Wi-Fi, Bluetooth location and also a cast screen option which will work with the Chromecast very soon. Alternatively you can pull down once and tap the status bar to reach the quick settings. Now they finally got rid of tap and hold to apply an action, so a single tap on Bluetooth or Wi-Fi will toggle it. You'll notice that Wi-Fi and Bluetooth are actually split. If you press the bottom half you'll go directly to the Bluetooth or Wi-Fi settings. Tapping into notifications gives us a notification volume and the icon next to that is a do not disturb mode. You can apply it for a certain amount of time or until the user turns it off. There are some settings which we'll check out a little later in the video. The Google Now launcher itself isn't all that different, you still have Google Now accessible on the left, tapping and holding brings up this familiar screen, the icons have had a slight redesign though. We do of course have the new status bar icons, notice the subtle ripple effect you get when pressing them as well. Diving into settings we can see that it looks a little different here, we now have a white theme going on which I actually like, it feels fresher. When you get to the end or top of a list you can see it creates an effect which kind of follows your finger. Tapping into display we have adaptive brightness which is a little different to normal, you can actually tweak the average brightness while still having auto brightness enabled. So essentially if you want the average auto brightness to be darker or brighter you can do that. I know a lot of people like that feature on Samsung devices, we now have it on stock Android. Sounds and notifications is more simplified and easier to use, all your different volumes are present here and the inclusion of a do not disturb mode which can be customised. You can also have it automatically turn on at certain times which is pretty sweet. There's a new option for showing notifications which for one allows you to control your notifications on your lock screen and gives you the ability to turn them off if you prefer. Going into app notifications you can actually turn off notifications for specific apps altogether. Search is a big part of Android L, you can see it in the settings area, it allows you to quickly search for example for Wi-Fi and it quickly brings up all the Wi-Fi settings. The battery area has also been redesigned, we now have a green theme and you can also see an approximate time of how long you have left. And it's the same deal with charging, it gives you an estimate of how long it's going to be until your device is fully charged. A battery saving mode can be found in the overflow menu, it can be manually turned on or it can be set to automatically turn on at a specific battery level. If we turn it on right now it basically kills all the animations, it decreases the brightness, it decreases the screen refresh rate and it limits the data for apps as well and you can see it's pretty slow but at least it's going to save you some juice when you need it. We've got a few new settings in accessibility, the first one is colour inversion, if you turn this on it basically inverts all the colours, you can see it actually looks uh, pretty funky. And we also have colour space correction, don't forget to actually toggle it on if you actually want to use these otherwise it won't have any effect, you can see the options we have here as well. 
I didn't really see any major additions in the development options. Art is default now, so no more Delvic at all. The only option I did notice was an experimental option for a media player. Another big talking point of the Google I.O. was the recents. Again, this has been reworked quite drastically. It's no longer a 2D scroller. It's now more of a stack of cards, similar to what we have on Google Chrome tabs. One of the features shown off was that you could have different Chrome tabs in the recents. That isn't working on this build. At least I haven't been able to get it to work, and it could be due to an older version of Chrome, but you can just see how many cards I have in here right now there's a lot of cards obviously it's not going to be able to keep these all in memory so uh, just be aware of that but yeah I kind of hope they include a kill all button here as it's quite a bit of effort to swipe away all these cards and if it works how they said there's going to be quite a few more if we use the volume rocker we have quick access to the do not disturb mode as well you can simply tap that it expands you can have it set to a certain time and again you can have it set to just when the user turns it off now there isn't any updated Google Apps on this build, actually the Google Apps it comes with are pretty damn old, but we can see the new material design in the calculator, you can see the status bar is coloured, you can pull out the little elements, you can see the little kind of ripple effects, and if you hold the delete button you'll see a sweeping animation, and it's just these little things that make an app seem a lot more polished and a lot more fluid, so I'm a big fan of this. The phone application also has the new material design swiping over, you can see the dialer icon smoothly moves with you. Again, animations and transitions are everywhere, you can also see the ripple effect. If we actually dial a number, you can see another new animation and transition which just makes it a better experience for the user. The heads up notification system is present in this build but I could only see it working for phone calls and Facebook Messenger so far, it wasn't working for things like WhatsApp or Hangouts. Now I'm sure there's a lot of you out there that are wondering, is this daily driver material? Well don't forget, it's a developer build, it was never meant to be daily driver material, and in my opinion it isn't unless of course you're willing to stop using some apps. There really isn't anything wrong with performance, it's smooth, which is an excellent sign for a developer build, as I'm sure it will be even smoother in the full release, but some apps just don't work. For example, Twitter force closes, I've used both the beta and regular versions. Dropbox is another one which force closes too. Facebook works, but if you go to a comment, it's all messed up and strangely transparent, so I'm not quite sure what's going on there. But uh, yeah, that's, that's up to you guys if you want to run this as your daily driver. I probably won't be. But overall guys, yeah, I'm really impressed with Android L. I like the direction Google is taking with the material design. I can't wait to check out more apps with it. I'm sure you all know by now that I'm a big fan of animations and transitions, all that eye candy. I think it's going to lead to a more polished and professional OS. So yeah, let me know what you guys think of Android L. Peace out.